My name is Sarah Houtman, and I started carrying as a way to empower myself to live life the way I wanted to. My name is John Houtman. My concealed carry journey started about a decade ago when I lived in Philadelphia and was working as a mechanic, sometimes in some not so great neighborhoods, and I started carrying out of necessity. As a woman, I've grown up being told that all of the things I should do to protect my safety were disempowering. I should not go out alone. I should not go out after dark. I shouldn't go jogging by myself. All of the things I was supposed to do to keep myself safe affected my quality of life. So when I started carrying, I found a way to keep myself safe and take responsibility for my own safety that allowed me to do what I wanted and live my life the way I wanted. Back before I was involved in auto repair, uh, I had gone to art school. And so there was a lot of kind of punk rock, anti-authoritarian vibes going on there, which I felt kind of had a little bit of a conflict. So on the one hand, you know, it's kind of pro-gun control. What do you need a gun for? Only the cops should have guns. But on the other hand, you know, authority is not a really great thing either. So I never felt like that was a really coherent kind of idea. And I never felt like I didn't have cultural permission to get involved in guns as a result of that. For me, I was raised to always be polite and always make everyone else around me comfortable. And I was never really taught to prioritize my own safety and my own boundaries. And when I started making the shift to carrying a firearm, I learned how to prioritize myself, prioritize my safety, and take responsibility for myself. And I found that mindset shift to be really empowering. I didn't come into self-defense from a tactical mindset. I actually saw a gun competition on YouTube and I thought it looked fun. So I thought, oh, I want to try that. I want to see if I can learn that skill. When I tried it, I found out that I could learn it and I could be good at it and that it was an empowering and uh, kind of life-changing thing to learn. When I came to firearms as a result of an interest in personal protection and self-defense, that was kind of in conflict with the cultural background of a lot of my peers and family and whatnot. And I felt like I had to do a lot of explaining off the bat, which was interesting because I didn't feel like it diverted from my personal values at all. I come from the kind of background of really strong free speech, you know, watching dudes like Frank Zappa give testimony against censorship and grew up during a time when the internet was starting to come into maturity and people were really interested in privacy and encryption. And I felt like things like protecting yourself, having the same kind of equipment that people in positions of authority were able to have, and that this wasn't something that should be denied to me, and it fit right into my First Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fourth Amendment kinds of principles. How we relate to self-defense aren't necessarily philosophical. The late, great William April in his seminars would talk about the difference between high responders and low responders. So when it comes to our discussions of self-defense as a couple, most of our differences occur around what we expect from each other in terms of how we're going to react in different scenarios and whether or not someone finds themselves in a position of wanting to, to get involved or less likely to want to get involved in certain things that we see. In any relationship, there will be differences of opinion, and that's okay. And it's okay if not everybody in the relationship is interested in carrying a firearm for self-defense. It doesn't mean they don't care about their safety. It doesn't mean that they don't, you know, they're not strong. There are a lot of different ways to be strong, and this is one of them. And if you choose to do it, that's awesome. And if not, that's okay too. It's all about having a conversation as a couple uh, you know, about what your roles are in the relationship and what you bring to the table. It's an enormous commitment to take on carrying a gun every day. And I wouldn't command that of anyone. But it's also important to have the conversations about who does what, what your roles are, what your responsibilities are. Is your partner prepared for the consequences of you potentially using a firearm? Do they know how to act in a situation where you might need to use a gun? And it's really important to have those conversations well ahead of time. It's nice to have everybody on the same page if you can. I don't really live a dangerous lifestyle. I live kind of a normal, boring, average life. When I looked around at some of the risks and benefits of carrying, for me, the benefit outweighs the risk. And everyone lives a different life. No one can tell you what you need. That's for you to decide. Learning the skills of self-defense is a lifelong journey, and this is where we're at right now. We're gonna change and evolve, and you're gonna change and evolve too, and that's normal, that's good. And the goal is just to continue learning throughout your lifetime and grow as a person in this journey that we all take together.